I'm going to review it. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Final Cut is here, and yes, today we're going to see Wreck-It Ralph. That's right, we're taking a look at Wreck-It Ralph. I had the joys of taking Honorable Son number one and number two to see this video game film from Disney. And let me tell you, folks, I was glad I finally got to see this picture. Now, the story tells us of Ralph, who's a bad guy in the video game, and he's tired of being the bad guy. He wants to change his role and be the hero for once. And we see what happens when he tries to change his role and upset the natural order of things within the video game universe. And along the way, he crosses paths with many characters, including a Vanellope, who is in the, this video game called Sugar Rush, who is also trying to change her role in the video game and, uh, you know, just improve prove herself that she is worthy to be part of the race. Folks, this film, oh, wow. Let me tell you, to best sum it up, it's like the Roger Rabbit of video game films. First off, let's talk about all the video game character cameos. It's impressive that Disney got the licensing enough to bring these characters into this film, but by doing that, besides having their own made-up video game, by bringing these other characters into it, it added so much not only legitimacy to the video game world they've set up, but also does folks who grew up with these video games some serious nostalgia. There are some characters in here that the kids will recognize, and there are many characters in here that the parents will recognize. Now, uh, what you may also recognize are the voice actors in this. They got some great talent in this film. Ralph, played beautifully by John C. Riley. You got uh, Sarah Silverman in here, who you won't recognize her voice at all in there, uh, but she plays Vanellope, the little girl in the Sugar Rush race game. Oh, I, I loved her character as well. You've got you got uh, some voice, other voice acting here by Adam Carolla. You got even Alan uh, Tudyke in here. Yes, that's right, Firefly fans. You got him in here. And you even get some voice cameos by Ed O'Neill. Now, this story is rich in a lot of things. Things. Not only do you get some nostalgia with some great references to classic video games, but you've got a solid story talking about the role of someone's life and the role they're in and how, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, but once you get to the other side, you find out it that grass is patchy and where you were wasn't so bad. Uh, I mean, it, it's a great message, and it's also a film that isn't too overly Disney, okay? Uh, this doesn't have a, uh, a, a Pixar name attached to it, but it had the feel of a Pixar-type film, okay? It was not too overly saturated sweet, yet, uh, you know, it also still had a nice family element to it. So I love the balance in this film. Done very well. John Lasseter was executive producer and you can tell that he really uh, made sure that they brought a film that it was well, it's for the whole family okay we're all growing up with video games I, the, the adults are gonna love all the old references and the kids are gonna love all the new stuff in there and but everybody is just gonna enjoy a nice solid family film that that's just fun Oh, I can't, I, you know, I just love this movie so much in so many ways. It was great how they mixed, the, created this video game world, and, and you bought into it. You wanted this world to be real because you could buy into it. Like, yeah, okay, video games, you know, congregate after the, the arcade closes, you know. Uh, so there's very, very few uh, plot questions in this film. It's just definitely one of those where you can not only get a good message, a good story, but but you can enjoy it, not feel like you're getting bashed overhead with some kind of message, and it's one that the entire family can enjoy. The 3D effects were great, though weren't necessarily needed because of it being an animated film. You know, I mean, they looked fantastic, but I think 2D will get just as much out of it as 3D. I gave it five stubs. It, it touched the video gamer in me, plus, uh, you know, just the solid acting and the story and the direction of this film is something that you all will really enjoy, but you don't have to take my word for it. I liked how many video game references and characters they used, and I liked their whole concept of 
like traveling between games in an arc and it brought back old arcades and such like that. I liked all of it basically. You liked all of it? Did you have a favorite part? Uh, probably one of my favorite parts is when uh, they make the candy car. You, you like that part? Yeah. yeah. What would you rate it? I rate it five stars or stubs. Well, it's a fun and unique movie. Okay. And who's your favorite character in it? Probably, uh, Fix It, Felix yeah. Jr. What did you like about him? Uh, I like it how he basically can just hit anything and will get fixed and he can jump mm -hmm. high. And would you recommend this to your uh, friends? Yeah. It's a really good movie. So there you have it, folks. From the mouth of babes, honorable son number one and honorable son number two, also giving its seal of approval. And if that doesn't sell you on this film, folks, I don't know what will. But definitely go check out Wreck-It Ralph while it's still in the theater. Great for the holiday season. And it, it's one that everyone should enjoy if you ever played a video game, either in an arcade or at home. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut, folks. Till next time, keep that ticket stuck.